Hello. In this module, I'm going to be talking about a few different ways that language modeling researchers use to evaluate how factual models are. Uh, and I'm also going to be talking a little bit about factuality's evil cousin, hallucination, um, which is obviously very related to factuality. Um, I'm going to motivate this section with an example. Um, I've recently needed to uh, generate synthetic data for, for a project that I've been working on. Um, and I needed to uh, generate synthetic biographies for different um, US senators and, and representatives. Um, by the way, the code to, to do this is in the GitHub repository for the Python workshop um, associated with this course. So. Um, so you can actually uh, find this data and re regenerate it uh, if you're interested. Anyway, so um, in the script that generates this data, I run through all of the different names of representatives in, in the US and also uh, their, uh, I, I create a prompt that includes their name and their, uh, their, their, their function and their home state. And then I ask GPT-3 to generate a uh, little mini biography. So this is the one that it generates for uh, Maria Cantwell, who's a Senator from Washington State. Uh, it says, Maria Cantwell was born in Seattle, Washington in 1951. She's the daughter of a Boeing engineer and a homemaker. Uh, she attended public schools and then went on to study at the University of Washington. She worked as a journalist before being elected to the US Senate in 1996. Um, and then it goes on to talk about her, her later career. Okay, so it turns out very little of this is correct. Uh, she was not, not born in Seattle. She was not born in that year. Her parents were not a Boeing engineer and homemaker. Uh, she didn't go to UW. Uh, she didn't work as a journalist and they've got totally way too early a date for when she was elected to the Senate. Other than that, it's uh, completely accurate. Um, so you've probably had the experience uh, in using ChatGPT of occasionally getting, getting garbage like this, but how do we quantify just how garbagey it is? Well, okay, so we're gonna consider a few different ways and broadly the, the ways to evaluate factuality break out into two categories. We can ask straight up, how often does the model get the right answer when it's prompted well, if we just ask it a question. Um, but then there's this, you know, we also care about if we use it for a generative task to say generate a biography like I did, um, how often does it, you know, spit out facts or how, how, how often does it make stuff up? Uh, so this, these are the different measures we'll be looking at in this short module. Uh, there's a few others that are out there, um, but these are kind of the key ones that are covered in, in, um, in, in your readings. Um, and I just want to point out that these do not measure reasoning skill or question answering ability per se. Uh, reasoning and question answering ability are higher, higher level capabilities which involve and relate to uh, accuracy, uh, but are not the same thing as accuracy, as, as we'll see. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the first kind of, the first way of measuring factuality, which is, uh, which we'll call fact completion. Um, fact completion here is just asking the question, if we throw a straightforward prompt at the system with like a little hole in it, representing um, a word that, that we're expecting to see, um, how often does it get it right? So here are a few examples of those kinds of sentences uh, for, for Maria Cantwell. Um, where do we source these things from? Well, uh, the sort of factuality literature um, often, you'll find in our readings, uses sources like um, knowledge uh, databases like, like Wikidata. Um, Wikidata, if you don't know, is a um, data store created by the Wikimedia Foundation that powers a lot of wiki sites like, like, like Wikipedia. Um, but um, it's essentially a set of triples of subject, predicate, object, uh, these being like the main constituents in a, in a statement. Um, and these are all just statements of facts, uh, which is saying that the subject um, relates to the object under a particular predicate. So uh, 
Maria Cantwell was born in Indianapolis. Maria Cantwell is a member of the Democratic Party and Maria Cantwell got a degree from Miami University are three facts which we might find in, in Wikidata. Um, so we, a fact value evaluation might mine all of the facts, all of the relations um, that are, are relevant um, to, to, to some task and then generate um, prompts. And it's pretty, pretty straightforward to generate sentences once you, um, or generate the beginnings of sentences once you have this, this, this triple data. Um, and then simply ask the language model for the, the highest probability completion. And so um, I think if we do this for, uh, if we do this for, for the, the model I looked at in the previous slide, uh, which was, I think, GPT-3, an early version of GPT-3, um, it gets about one third, you know, it gets one out of the, the three questions right. So this would give us a, a accuracy at one, meaning like the top, the likelihood that the correct answer is the highest probability completion of, uh, of only 33%. So that's one indication that uh, uh, that model anyways, is not doing particularly well in this in, uh, for this kind of knowledge. So I mentioned, we also care about open-ended generation. Um, and uh, one of the papers in the readings for, for this module uh, I think has a, a, a much you know much more detailed explanation that I'm going to give, but uh, they talk about how um, how they just all the facets of of of, of evaluating open ended generation factuality. So um, at a high level source a bunch of um, prompts and then generate completions for for those prompts. Um, and now once you have all of those completions or what they call continuations here, uh, then move to phase two, which is evaluation. And for evaluation, we take those continuations and we first decide whether they are worthy of, of being fact checked or not. Uh, and then if they are worthy, then we match up uh, the, the, the continuation to the right set of, of evidence, for example, from, from Wikidata or Wikipedia, uh, to use in the evaluation. And then we can do a whole suite of different little micro evaluations of factuality. And so we're gonna be looking at two of them, um, which is the named entity error rate and entailment rate. Um, the other two that are listed on this slide are fluency and things like diversity and repetition, which are more, uh, speak, speak more to the sort of high order skill of, of uh, um, fluency uh, of, of the quality of the uh, question answering result. Um, so let's look at named entity error rate. Um, you could take the uh, completion that, that I generated with GPT-3 for Maria Cantwell. Um, now named entities you know, informally are things that you would capitalize in text like uh, places and, and, and people um, and important names. Um, here I've highlighted all of the, uh, the, the, the named entities in um, in, 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 the, uh, in the completion that I generated. Um, and so we could then just ask the question, how many of the, the phrases that, that uh, the, the, the named entities are not in some you know, base truth uh, representation of the knowledge for that subject? Uh, so if we assume that every kind of salient thing about Maria Cantwell's biography is in uh, the Wikipedia article, uh, and we find uh, things in the continuation that are not in the Wikipedia article, then that's at least some piece of evidence that it might not be hallucinating, uh, might be hallucinating uh, or inventing um, in, in, in inventing a um, name that is, is not actually related to Maria Cantwell. Um, and if you take this in the aggregate, you get a named entity error rate. Uh, uh, or we might call some would call a hallucination rate. Um, so I think in this case, the uh, set of things that were not in the Wikipedia article were like Seattle, Washington, Boeing, University of Washington. Uh, so we get this hallucination rate of 37%. Now it's an imperfect metric because of course the uh, truth document, in this case, the Wikipedia article might incidentally mention things like 
like Boeing and Seattle. And in fact, since she's from Washington, there's some reason to think that's that's more probable than chance. Um, and that's indeed related to why the language models uh, do these hallucinations in the first place. Um, so uh, it's an imperfect metric, but over uh, the sort of expectation and is that over a large number of these kinds of uh, probes uh, it will correspond to uh, the more sort of grounded uh, measures of actuality. And we'll see a little bit of evidence of that in a, a later slide. Okay, so then our sort of final way of measuring factuality, uh, also related to open-ended generation, is something called um, entailment. Um, uh, entailment is a, uh, uh, determining entailment is a capability of language models uh, that's, uh, sorry, the NLP task that has been studied for decades now. And uh, Zay Shad, uh, one of the course instructors, is, uh, has a lot of experience as, uh, and is an expert in entailment. Um, entailment is basically uh, asking whether a particular uh, sentence is entailed by, uh, refuted by, or neither with respect to uh, some ground truth document. Um, so in this case, I've highlighted the statement, Maria Cantwell was born in Seattle, Washington in 1951. Now, supposing we could find in Wikipedia the sentence which speaks to the same question that this statement is answering, uh, which in the case of the actual Wikipedia article is Cantwell was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. Well, we can pretty clearly see um, that our, genera our generated statement is refuted by uh, the Wikipedia statement. Um, so being able to do this for arbitrary sentence pairs is, is or was, uh, I think still is a hard problem in natural language processing. Uh, but suppose we have, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a decent entailment model, uh, we can then kind of run over the, the sentences in, um, in, the, uh, in the continuation that we generated and uh, measure, uh, basically ask whether uh, each claim is um, entailed by the evidence or not, and then calculate the rate. Uh, and that's what we call the, the entailment rate. Um, so, uh, oops, sorry, yeah, so, um, factuality can be measured with automated by, you know, if you have a data set like Wikidata, um, you can, you can measure factuality in this automated way. It can also be measured by humans, um, by, uh, or should say, I mean, obviously humans, uh, produce the Wikidata data to begin with. So in some sense, that's also human evaluation, but more direct human evaluation would be able, you know, with more direct human evaluation, you can just have people look at the continuation and then just measure the entailment uh, and name density or rate and such by hand. Um, and, uh, or, or measure like basically whether the statements are, are factual or not. And so uh, this paper, which was in the readings did that and, and then looked at the correlation between the human direct sort of human uh, evaluation metrics and um, uh, and the automated methods and found pretty high correlation, um, much higher correlation if the people reading the documents were experts in the domain um, versus, you know, just using a bunch of uh, crowd workers with no particular expertise and taking the majority uh, sort of turns out that there isn't uh, as much wisdom in the crowds as, as you think, it's kind of better uh, to have an expert do, do the human avail. But in both cases, you get some correlation with the automated uh, measures of entailment and name density error rate. Um, final slide for this module, uh, big table, no need to read it. Uh, basically it's saying two important things, which is that factuality as measured by named into the error rate and entailment improve uh, as models seem to improve as the number of model parameters increases, um, which suggests that uh, as models get more capable, uh, the, uh, the rate at which these fabrications happen will go down. Um, and also that for, uh, for the prompted metrics, uh, 
it matters very much whether the prompt uh, is, is itself factual or not. So if you feed, uh, as you probably observed in using ChatGPT, if you feed it a prompt which contains something misleading, uh, it's very, very easy to lead it astray and have it generate uh, non-factual continuations. So this is just this set of uh, columns is quantifying that and saying that factual prompts uh, elicit higher factuality. Okay, so I'm gonna hand it off now. Thank you.